What is going on guys? It is your boy Everly Smith coming at you with another brand new WWE Supercar video. I'm going to give you my Clash of Clans tutorial for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed today's video, consider smashing the like button. Let's hit 200 likes for this tips and trick video. And subscribe to the channel if you guys can. That would be wonderful. Show your support as always. I love you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my Clash of Champions strategy because so many people are requesting it. And I figured I'd show you guys it because I know you guys don't want to watch this two hour stream that we did earlier today. So I, I could understand people want to see the strategy I use in Clash of Champions. I've spent a total of, I've just spent now 600 because I reloaded right now. I spent 500 so far total and I'm currently ranked 20 in the world. Some people have spent 8, 10, 15K already and they're only ahead of me by like a few thousand points. Well, I'm, I'm over here only at 500 points. So yeah, uh, I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing it and hopefully this could help you out. Keys of my strategy, you need a balanced deck. You need a balanced deck to, for this to work. If you're not balanced, I think you're just going to be in tough shit until Supercard changes it the way they have to change it. But if you're not balanced, you guys are in deep, deep shit. It's just unfortunate. That's just the way it is. So if you're balanced, you know, I'm going to show you guys right now how I'm doing this. First things first, of course, balanced deck. Everyone is a WrestleMania card. Put momentum on your weakest card. If you have five momentum, you are gold mine. Uh, if you don't have five momentum, you could you'll suffer a little bit from that. Uh, make sure you have, you know, good supports as well. That's another good thing to have. Managers always OP as always. So yeah, let's get into it. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to break it down for you guys real quick for you. So right now I'm currently in Arena 81 or Level 81 if you want to call it that, where my board is pretty bigger than a lot of other people. As you can see, like strategy-wise, there's so much crap on the board happening. So what you want to do is peak. Peaks are absolutely useless. Do not spend thousand credits for 50 peaks. Peaks are without doubt useless. They're really hard to pull, by the way. But peaks are just dumb to buy. So do not buy peaks. Round three is officially a scam. Do not do round three for 100 credits and or do not uh, restore your superstar stats. Both of those things are scams. Just don't waste your time, all right? Uh, just buy bouts, if anything. Only spend money on bouts. That is the key advice here for you guys. Now, the way I like to do this is also you want to know these cards you got to strategize if you've been playing the game for years you should know every card from the top of your head where they proc because we all know procs in this mode are super super high they can go from 98k to 248k it is really really bad when it comes to procs in this mode so what i usually do to start is i start from top to bottom to bottom to top uh, last time i went bottom i'm still gonna do bottom just to be just so i do not hit hbk at all so i can hopefully show you guys how i do this now, I might hit HBK early, but hopefully that doesn't happen in this video. So I can show you guys how I do it if you don't hit HBK early. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Now, I know Pete Dunn is toughness and charisma. And I have a lot of cards here that could beat Pete Dunn. I think two of them will lose 100%. So I have a good chance of winning this. So I'm going to go with toughness and hopefully it picks a card that could win. It picked one of my cards that could lose, unfortunately. Thankfully, his proc wasn't as high. If his proc was 250, Nakamura's just effed. So we survived that round. Eric is a power and toughness card, so you just want to pick Charisma. I know every card here is going to destroy him, so I'm not worried one bit. And of course, these cards are lower tier, so we have a lower proc rate, so that's good news. Now, what I usually do is I eliminate one entire thing. I know uh, Wolf sucks in speed and charisma. I think those are my two calls. So I'll win this with ease. I'm just going to eliminate this whole entire bottom row. Uh, Dream. Uh, this one's tough because he could actually whoop me in a lot of these stats. And if they pick Corbin, we're dead. So I'm just going to pick Roman, and hopefully it plays into our, our advantage. Uh, power, that's that could be bad if he procs. Lucky for me, it's not that high of a proc. I think uh, if it was Corbin, though, he probably wouldn't have screwed. And Apollo Crews is terrible in toughness, so we'll just hit him with the toughness. Because he, he's power and speed, doesn't stand a chance. I'm so sorry, Apollo. So yes, as you can see, me knowing all my cards helped me so much. 
They made it the bottom row. Do not restore your cards. Just keep going. Uh, it's just a waste of money in my opinion. So now I'm going to work my way up to the second line. Now I know Fandango sucks in speed. However, we do have Undertaker who's weak in speed. However, we got a 4 out of 5 chance that it does pick Undertaker. I'm going to risk it because it is an 80% 80 chance Undertaker doesn't get picked. And of course, thank God it, didn't, it worked to my advantage. Because <laughs> that Fandango would have killed me at 250k proc in every other stat possible. Lovely. Alright, sorry Fandango. So we got Pete Dunn. We got everyone is available in power. So Pete Dunn is automatically screwed. No matter who I picked. Again, just got to be patient. I know the rounds will take a little longer. But you want to win your rounds instead of losing your rounds. Unless you really get screwed. So we have eliminated this entire bottom side already. Uh, we got two of the three remaining. Uh, we're pretty much screwed either way. So I probably will have to go with Corbin here. Because he only lost toughness. So either way, no matter what call we get. Hopefully it just works to my advantage. And it works in my advantage. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So we're gonna make this left card because there's nothing here I could use. So this left card makes the most sense to me to go after. Uh, this guy is actually really, really powerful. And we're, pro we're probably at that spot now where we're kind of screwed, but we got toughness on both cards. So we're fine on this one. You could proc, I don't give a crap. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna get rid of this one over here. Now this is where the photographic memory comes into play. You gotta remember where everything that you hit already is. And then the next round, you gotta focus. Now I'm gonna lose this round most likely. I'll, I'll beat Kane here. So let's beat Kane. Sorry Kane. And now just remember the photographic memory. I don't really need to screenshot it, but if you want a screenshot here, you can. Now this is the part where spending 100 credits comes into play. Do you wanna spend it? Absolutely not. Take the L and go. Since I defeated a lot of those cards, I'm going to get between 31 and 45 points. I think I will get a lot since I defeated everybody. So I get 45 points. If you defeat everybody, you didn't lose at all, you get 45 points. So again, 45 points is a lot of points in this mode. You get four picks as well on top of that, which is also good. So four picks and anywhere from between like 30 to 45 points is usually what you people get. Again, now I'll just play the next bout. All right, just play the next bout. Now, photographic memory-wise, is I know I selected every card possible. Now, I know this isn't going to be the card, because I uh, selected this card. Smartly, I did. So now, I know these two, and then this upper part, are all the cards I need to select. Left. So I know this one won't be Sean. Uh, he's good in toughness and charisma, so we're going to go with power. Sorry, bro. Don't want to hurt you, man, but it's going to happen. Now this one right here could be Sean. It is potential to be Sean. Because, but if it's not Sean, I have to work my way around it, which is a little, a little pain in the butt. So it wasn't Sean. But now I know this isn't gonna be the card, but now I'm gonna have to work my way around that. I could also go for the one on top corner to make my life easier, but either way, I could trap it. Because I just got to work the top part. The only problem is if I find it really late in the rounds, it could screw me over. So I'm going to actually start up here. And then hopefully it's one of these on the corners. Uh, this actually does benefit him. So I'm going to just pick Undertaker and hopefully get this one stack caller. Of course, I don't, it never calls a one stack for me ever. That's cool. All right. Now we're going to we have many options here. I'm going to go with this one on the bottom. Wasn't it. But Buddy Murphy sucks in charisma. So we'll be fine here. We do have a lot of chances still. Now again, guys, I'm in Arena 80, so it's more. It is a lot more cards on the board, but my strategy should work with a lot of other cards. Uh, all right. So if we dream, we'll just go with speed. We win that one easily. Sorry, dreamy. So now this is where it gets really, really hard, unfortunately, for me, because now I know it's one of these cards here it's one of these cards so hopefully we get it earlier instead of later all right so we got Kane. and we got a lot of two stat cards now i want to see what benefits me because everyone has lost a stat necessarily everyone has lost a stat and that every card is you got power you got toughness you got speed 
and no one I see besides John Morrison is charisma. So Morrison makes the most sense possible because he doesn't have a defective stat. Hopefully, just calls him in my advantage. It could screw me over though with Kane proccing, but he doesn't proc. If he did proc, I would have lost. But it makes my life easier. So we're close to Sean. We're th within four cards right now. Unfortunately, I have been screwed this round completely bad. I gotta go with power. I got a 75% chance of winning this one. Unless he procs and I get screwed again. We're good. Alright. So now we're down to three more cards. And there is Sean. We found him. So, I know he kills me in a lot of stats. <laughs> Uh, I got three cards remaining. I got two that are good in power. One good in speed. And then one good in charisma. So power is the most logical one to go with. Because he can't even proc there. So if it picks Corbin, we're screwed. But either way, it's a W. And that's pretty much how you get around LMS. You just got to have a photographic... Uh, I just said LMS. C-O-C. -C, or cock. For all of my trolls out there. And that's how you pretty much do it. Uh, it's not hard at all it could have taken me an extra bout which would be total of three bouts which is 60 credits total but peaks are very expensive round three is 100 credits to continue restoring is 40 each or 200 something for 240 i think to restart all so you save so much credits just by within using three bouts and that's if you have the worst luck i had the worst luck happen to me there going to almost near the second last card so again, you want to strategize with that. And that most of you'll be spending is 60 credits because we, we add three bouts together. It is pretty much 60 credits if you buy five or 75 credits. Uh, and I know free players will be like, Ed, I'm a free player. Again, three bouts is what you'll need as a free player. But if, you know, if you're not going high in the levels, it will most likely take you two bouts as a free player if you're not going crazy. So just be patient. That is the way how you have to play COC for the most cheapest way possible and for the most free to play way possible. And uh, I hope this tutorial helped you guys so much out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this, like, comment, and subscribe. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.